Welcome back to the Pathways to Happiness podcast. My name is Nina Levon. I am a life coach that specializes in life transformation and personal development. And today we're going to be talking all about self-evolution and becoming a more authentic version of ourselves, which is such a huge topic with so many facets. And I've gotten quite a few questions about this lately, so I am extremely happy to be discussing this today. But before I do, as always, I wanted to thank you so much for your support both here and on the Nina Levon YouTube channel. The questions that you've been sending in lately have been so thought-provoking and interesting, and I appreciate all the comments you leave and all the personal stories and the insight that you guys share. So thank you so much for that and for being a part of the channel. It's really just such a pleasure to talk with you all. So let's go ahead and jump right into this because I feel like it is such an important topic and one that's really relevant and really relatable right now. One thing this whole pandemic is really bringing to the surface for a lot of people is that they are finding that after all this disruption, after all this time, they've been able to spend in introspection or away from their regular routine, is that they are finding that they are becoming a new person or that the universe was maybe telling them for a long time that they needed to evolve and grow, but there was just a lot of resistance there. Things are changing all around us and the world is just moving in a completely different direction right now. It's forcing us to take a look at our lives and to take a look at our own selves and to kind of see if we are ready to shed our skin in some way, if we are beginning this process of self-evolution. I actually just recorded a video about knowing when it's time for life change, which is a topic that's kind of related to this, but actually very different. I'll be posting that one within the next week or so, but today I really wanted to focus on the internal. We know when the external is evolving, we can directly see it and we can feel it, but more and more people are heading in the direction of what we call being self-actualized, which is simply a way to say that they are beginning to head in the direction of becoming the best, most authentic versions of themselves. It is the full realization of our potential or becoming what sometimes we call our true selves. And so I wanted to take some time to discuss what that really means and what the process of self-evolution really is, because it's definitely not something that is straightforward or clean cut. This process can actually feel really painful. And because when we evolve as a person, we have to make changes. We have to let go of what is no longer part of our path. And that can be incredibly hard because our ego is so wrapped up in all of this. It's got a vested interest in the identity that it helped create. It's almost like a mask, especially when you start to realize that it is not really the true you anymore. I think once we get to a certain point in our lives, we feel like it will last forever. As soon as we get to a part that we like or that we can really identify with or latch on to, we simply want to keep going with it as long as we can because it's also easy, it's comfortable, it requires no thought and no effort anymore. We've mastered everything to do with this persona. It's familiar and it can be really, really tricky trying to leave the familiar. But when we start to get that inner knowing that we are changing, we can really only push it away for so long. Resistance can only work for a certain period of time and then it starts to get really, really uncomfortable. A few weeks ago on the podcast, I talked about one of my clients who is a violin player who lost her job because of COVID-19. She teaches violin, but most of her income comes from playing at weddings and events, and she is incredibly talented. So she used to be pretty booked. And then, of course, everything started changing so quickly because of the virus. 
and she not only was not able to do any of her gigs, no one is booking her for any future gigs because there's just so much uncertainty. So in that podcast, I spoke about being forced to make life changes and how that can often hurt our ego and our identity because we often get so wrapped up in our occupations and our hobbies and we start to confuse them with who we are as people. So for example, she had a huge grieving period. I mean, she's really still in it because she felt and feels that how she was was threatened and she didn't like the idea of becoming anything else or anyone else because she truly felt that what she did really made up who she was as a person. And I think we all feel that way sometimes. And it can be part of the pain that we experience or the confusion when the universe is asking us to change. And that's also something I want to point out. Self-evolution can happen naturally and organically, or it can happen because we have no choice. And either one can be challenging, but also either one can have extremely positive outcomes. In fact, whenever we do the inner work, whenever we engage in introspection and self-analysis, whenever we take time to really put effort into self-growth, there is something powerful that occurs because of that. Our life moves forward and in a much more focused way. So even though it can feel uncomfortable in the end, it really is worth it. One of the things I see a lot and certainly something I've been extremely guilty of in the past is simply trying to pull every aspect of yourself or everything that is identifiable into the new chapters of your life. And I don't just mean internal factors. I also mean external artifacts. It's like we are hoarders of both physical artifacts, but also mental artifacts. I'm going to give you an example of this. A few years back, I made a major move after being in the same location and actually the same home for years and years and years. And when I was packing up to move, I realized I had an entire garage full of boxes that I had not opened since the last time I would moved and even some boxes I hadn't opened in probably 15 or 20 years. Now, during the last couple years, I've really been becoming a minimalist more and more. So I definitely wanted to go through all these boxes to see what I had been kind of dragging along with me for so long. And when I did, it was like a time capsule. Firstly, I would have never even remembered I ever owned any of these items and 99% of them went directly into the trash but I made a huge realization. I wasn't keeping this stuff because it was valuable. I mean, although actually some of it actually was because I used to be a huge collector of vintage clothes and toys and books and all kinds of random other artifacts, but I had actually been keeping them out of fear. And the fear was was that if I let these things go, that I would be saying goodbye to a part of myself, to a part of my identity. And it was an identity that I clearly thought was the one that should be my final product. And I had clearly thought that I had it all figured out at age 25, that this was it. This was the best version of me. This was the final product. And there was clearly a desperation. It was just one of those aha moments for myself. And I think about how much we can end up doing the exact same thing except mentally with our self-concept. We think to ourselves, I can't not like tap dancing anymore because I've always liked tap dancing or I can't be assertive because I'm a passive person and that's just who I am or I'm embarrassed to have an identity that does not include me being a professional violin player. 
We lock ourselves into one of our first drafts, forgetting that we still have to complete our story, that we have endless chapters to go. We can't get stuck in chapter six. We can't get even stuck in chapter 12. We've got to keep writing. We've got to keep growing. And as perfect as we might think our lives are, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know that this is the best we can do because we can only see what's behind us. And if we are observant, maybe what is around us right now, but that's something that a lot of us tend to ignore. And it's not difficult to understand why we do this, why we have our lives in this way because our ego is telling us that we've already got an identity and it really wants to stick with that because a lot of the time we feel that other people are also attached to that version of us and they like it so we are that much more resistant to change it or sometimes we aren't digging deep enough we're sticking to the shallow we are caught up in our distractions or whatever chosen method of escapism that we have to feel enough pressure to evolve but like i said when the call is coming from inside we're going to feel it at some point we're not going to be able to resist this forever but it also can be tricky because when we do start to evolve as a person or go through any type of inner awakening, the people around us usually aren't going to be happy about it because they are, again, attached to that other version of ourselves. They want us to be who we were and they expect us to be who we were. And even when we get to a point in time where we are actually happier or we have become a more authentic version of ourselves, it's likely that is going to be met with a lot of criticism, a lot of speculation, and in some cases, even ridicule. And again, even though that can feel extremely painful, we have to be loving and understanding of the people around us because for them, it feels like a loss. They might be grieving who we were because they don't recognize who we have become. They probably want us to do the activities we used to do together, and they want us to have the same interests and the same belief systems that we used to have. And again, that's totally understandable. That's the person that they fell in love with. And although we are technically that same person, we feel different to them because we are thinking and behaving differently. We can think about this in reverse. Think about someone that we know that we shared a lot in common with that suddenly changed or even gradually changed. It's unlikely that we were really happy with that end result, even though they were really happy with the new direction of their life. It is human nature to desire and expect the status quo, the familiar. So because of that, it can make us again, that much more resistant to change. Just a few nights ago, I had this vivid dream about a girl I grew up with. She was several years older than me and I never knew her all that well because we weren't in the same grade and I was actually in the same grade with her younger brother who I was much closer with. I always thought she was just such an amazing person and I really genuinely looked up to her. So anyway, I had this dream about her and when I woke up, I had this strong desire to get in touch with her and to talk to her again. And then I realized that the version of her that I wanted to talk to was like the eighth grade version of her and most likely nothing to do with who she actually is in this moment in time. That doesn't make her any less valuable or any less amazing, but I understood that my attachment to her was really a past version of her. And I think this happens a lot too. It doesn't mean we can't have relationships that evolve right along with our own self evolution, which can absolutely take place. We can see that clearly in successful marriages where people can go through huge life changes together and also because of this experience huge internal changes, but they can grow and evolve together. Now, definitely this is not always the case. In fact, it can certainly go the other way, but I just wanted to point out that it can happen 
both in friendships and in romantic relationships as well. But getting back to our own self-evolution, the one thing I wanted to get across today is that we need to listen to our heart. And I know that sounds so cliche, but it is simply critical to be able to continuously grow as a person and to understand our own inner guidance system. If we pay attention, we can start to really tune into our inner compass and have that inner knowledge that we are changing, that it is okay to let go of that past version of ourselves and we've come to a fork in the road that we can no longer ignore. And when we feel that we are changing, that we are growing, it is not a negative thing. It is not a betrayal. It is an invitation to be a better version of ourselves, one that is in alignment with our spirit at this current moment. And it is always a positive. We should always evolve through our whole life. And I just wanted to offer today a few tips and suggestions that might help us along in this process, especially if we're feeling a lot of resistance. The first thing is that we have to spend time in quiet. We have to become self-aware and stop pushing the thoughts away that are telling us that we are outgrowing who we were. It involves a lot of self reflection. Look around at your surroundings and see what doesn't resonate with you anymore and try to figure out why. What aspects of yourself are changing? And we need to be honest about whatever feelings come up about that. There could be a lot of negative emotions that show up. They call it growing pains for a reason. And a lot of the time we have pushed it away for so long, we realize that we stayed in a career or a relationship way too long because we didn't have the courage to be honest with ourselves. Or maybe we didn't feel like we had the inner strength to you know, really go through with this change at that point in our life. Because again, inner change often leads to outer change, which can be very challenging to navigate when you feel like your life is already set up. But once we have that inner knowing, we have to cultivate it. We have to let that part of ourselves bloom and expand as it needs to. Because if we try to stop it, if we stunt that growth and we try to continue to be a version of ourselves that is no longer authentic or organic, our life satisfaction and our happiness is going to decrease. It's going to decrease immensely. And there's just a ton of wasted time that can happen when we are forcing ourselves to go through the rituals and the habits and the life of a person that we know we no longer are, which is going to lead to a lot of frustration and even anxiety or anger in a lot of cases. It's going to start to feel wrong and disingenuous. So we need to honor where our heart is leading us and telling us who we are at this point in time. So this just allows us the room that we need for growth and to continue to awaken and maybe start pushing past a lot of the limiting beliefs and the old stories about ourselves that we can start to understand don't ring true for us anymore. We've just told ourselves that we were one certain way for so long that it might be just really challenging to even see past that at first or to really let ourselves explore it all. But if we don't let ourselves do that, we block what we could become. We block not only our full potential, but the only real avenue for that inner peace because if we are again trying to stop this evolution, trying to cling onto something that is no longer working for us or no longer feels like a true part of who we are, that is a huge deal. Of course, self-growth is essential and personal development is valuable, but it goes beyond that when we are talking about self-evolution because we are really just saying that we are peeling away the layers of ourselves that are no longer healthy, that are no longer serving us or bearing fruit. We can't 
hold on to every aspect of every stage of our evolution because firstly, it's not, again, healthy to do that, but it's also completely unnecessary. Our present doesn't erase the past. Who we were isn't disqualified or forgotten. Our past selves did the best they could with what they had. They did well for us, but make no mistake, there will be a future self. Nothing stays the same forever. Everything in all of life is changing and evolving. And so we have to stop being afraid of that. The more we can learn to tap into who we really are, the more we can be present for others, and the more we can contribute all around. So we must remember that we can't listen to our ego. We aren't our occupation. We aren't our hobbies. We aren't our relationships. These are aspects of our life, but they don't define us. All these things can actually completely change, and at the core will still be us. And by self-evolving, we are simply becoming a closer version to who that really is. The external stuff, it doesn't matter. We can make it a big deal if we want to, or we can choose to downplay it. Because in the end, it's the internal us that is real. We can do anything we want, but firstly, we need to make sure that we are who we really are. We have to accept that it can be in constant change, that it can flow in the same way that life flows. And we can think about it that way, exactly like that. We don't want to be stagnant. We want to flow like a river, constantly expanding and growing and moving. So it is my invitation to you to spend some time in reflection and see if you are allowing yourself the space that you need to expand and grow. So often we get in our own way and sometimes we need to take a step back and allow the natural progression of life to happen. Either way, know that you are worthy. Know that whatever version of yourself that you happen to be right now that it is enough it is perfect for this point in time and as you evolve that version will become perfect for that point in time we are all works in progress we are all beautiful but we are not perfect and we are never that finished masterpiece and that's okay that's how it should be because perfection doesn't even exist and as long as we are continuously moving forward that's all we can ask of ourselves. So that's where I'm going to leave it today. But I do hope that these words were words that you needed to hear today and that you know that the universe and that life in general is always happening for us, not to us. It's hard to see it that way sometimes, but that truly is the reality. I also want to remind you that I am always open to your questions, so do send them in. I try to answer as many of them as I possibly can. You can reach me by email at nina.lavon at gmail.com. That is spelled N-E-N-A dot L-A-V-O-N-N-E at gmail.com. And you can also reach me on Twitter, and my Twitter handle is at Nina Lavon. So as always, I thank you so much for spending time with me today. It is always an absolute pleasure and I greatly look forward to talking to you next time. See you soon, guys.